Hello! This DEEK training video is part three of the Slurm job submission process review, focusing specifically on the commands used to check resource availability for Slurm jobs. As mentioned in part two, whenever constraints are used within a batch script, best practice should be to confirm that these specified resources are available before the job is submitted. In addition, to constraints. Other limiting factors to node assignment are specified resources themselves, like CPUs and memory requested. Note that our examples only constraint placed on resource requirements is that an assigned node's features must include 10 gig. The original example also specified one node, 16 cores, and one gig of memory which fits all 10 gig nodes. So while this example's requested resources might not prove to be a limiting factor, that is not often the case. Let's look further into some of those cases, which will require a larger terminal window. To check the status of cluster nodes, use the sinfo command. For simplicity's sake, the sinfo command will be run with options limiting output. More information on sinfo, such as customizing command output, can be found on our user wiki. For our example, we are sorting output by nodes with the dash capital N option and listing only idle nodes in the small partition with the dash T and dash P options. As you can see in the command output, field lengths are truncated by default, specifically impacting the Features column. If assigned node features are unknown to you, watching the Compute Node Components training video is recommended. This information can also be found, once again, on our user wiki. To better display assigned node features, we can customize sinfo command output using the dash o option and some pre-selected fields, the last of which specifies the length of the displayed features column. From our output, we can see that of the 33 nodes showing as idle, only 12 meet our 10 gig constraint requirement. So regardless of the resources on the other 21, for our example, only those 12 nodes will be considered. Note that this output does not include mixed status nodes. To include them, simply add mixed after the dash T idle option with a comma separating it. Had we not submitted our example already, we could now submit our job knowing that available node resources exist and the job should run shortly. Had no nodes been available, we could either adjust our constraints and resources accordingly, or simply know that we would need to wait in the queue. Let's look at some simple methods in which our resources can be adjusted. If network latency is not a concern, we can change our number of nodes to two and tasks per node to eight. Along those lines, we can then eliminate our 10 gig requirement as all DEEK compute nodes have at least eight cores. This makes all 33 idle nodes observed earlier potential targets for our job. This train of thought can also be applied to consolidate multi-node jobs to a singular node. For example, if we were originally requesting InfiniBand resources, but all InfiniBand nodes were taken, perhaps an available singular 32 core node could meet our requirements rather than four 8 core nodes. We would then need to change our partition and remove the switches directive accordingly. In all cases, this may impact the timing of your job. 
and is not a required process. But if flexibility is an option for you, in the long run, considering it could potentially save you time waiting in the queue. This concludes part three of the Slurm job submission process review. You should now know how to check the cluster for resource availability, prevent request conflicts, and give consideration for adjusting resource requirements if applicable. Please send any questions or comments via email to deke-help at wfu.edu. Thank you.